Today is Pentecost, and that's a celebration for us. It's not a calendar uh, holiday, apparently. It's, I can't find it on my calendar. And there's a whole page of holidays. I mean, they got everything. Um, you know, everything including Canada and Mexico on my calendar, and I can't find Pentecost on there. Um, it's one of the three festivals that, that were established early on, along with the Passover, 50 days after Passover, we have Pentecost, and then there's the Feast of Booths in the fall. Pentecost is connected with grain. Uh, it's connected with the first harvest, a celebration. And so everything's about grain right now. I don't know if you noticed in, in Mark and Joseph, grain everywhere. So it's a harvest of sorts. Um, and then the Jewish people have taken Pentecost and, and it's evolved into what is Shavuot, and that is a celebration of Moses receiving Torah from God. And so it's interesting that they're celebrating the Old Covenant, um, and we're celebrating the New. What we're celebrating is the Holy Spirit, God giving us the Holy Spirit. That's the celebration of Pentecost. It's the Holy Spirit's day. Jesus gets Christmas and Easter. Pentecost is the Holy Spirit's day. You've got to give him some due, too, right? You know, he's got to have a day, right? Um, and so nothing happens, nothing, nothing in God's story happens apart from the Holy Spirit. There is there's nothing and I really tell you nothing, because if we go back to the very beginning, look at this, Genesis 1-2, second verse of the Bible. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters, the Spirit of God. See, before anything, there was surfing. The Holy Spirit was surfing, was hovering over the waters. He was the first surfer, the Holy Spirit. He's my guy. That's my guy. Yeah, I, I mean, Dave, this is... You know, I mean, yeah. uh, I, I, it, riding the Spirit, how about this one? This is what, this is, this is... Riding the Spirit is the essence of God's creational intentions. How about that? So you go back to the very beginning and everything happens because the Spirit is moving. Everything happens according to the Spirit, even creation itself. And so as we go along, if you, which I did, I, I, I have a computer program that makes this easy, but you search Spirit, Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, and then you go through the, the Bible and what we, we find it right there at creation. We find it in our Joseph story. We find it in Joseph. This is Genesis 41, 38. So Pharaoh asked them, Pharaoh's asking his wise men, his counsel, after Joseph had interpreted his dream, he said to his, his wise men, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? And so Pharaoh and all the, the wisest men of Egypt could see that the Spirit of God was on this man, Joseph. And then in the Old Testament, we have the Holy Spirit named upon these people where, where it's actually, you know, sometimes it's implied that the Spirit of God is on someone, but it's actually specifically said the Holy Spirit was upon Moses, Joshua, Samson, David, Saul for, for a, a dance, and all the prophets. No, no prophet spoke uh, except for the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit in the, in the Old Covenant, in the Shabbat days, the Old Covenant, the before Pentecost, the Holy Spirit would only come upon certain people that God chose for a specific time and for a specific purpose. And that's why David says in Psalm 51, after he realizes his great mistake, he, he says, God, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Because he realizes that that's the way it worked. God could put his spirit upon someone and take it away, which he did with Saul. 
Saul, you're a anointed leader, but Saul's heart turned away from God and, and, and God took his spirit back. And so it, that's the way it was in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament. Nothing good happened without the Spirit. It was always the Spirit, but the Spirit just was on specific people at specific times for purposes. Jesus' ministry began when? When he was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended upon him. That's when his ministry began. Again, nothing happens in God's story without the Holy Spirit. Jesus was resurrected from the dead through the Holy Spirit. Paul is very clear about that. And then resurrected, Jesus told the disciples to stay in Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. And they were at Pentecost is when the Spirit came upon them. And then they realized that anybody who put their faith in Jesus Christ was then also filled with the Holy Spirit. Much to their surprise, even Gentiles. And that's what turned Paul and Peter's heart when they said, look, the Holy Spirit is upon, the gen is upon Gentiles. How can, we, how can we put any obstacles in their way? Because they have the Holy Spirit just like us. There is only one Holy Spirit. There's only one. It's the same one that was in all of these people, the same one that was surfing, at the very beginning, same one that was in Joseph, Moses, David, Jesus, all these believers on down to you and me at OCC in Pentecost 2017. We can be filled and we are filled with that same spirit. And so that's our celebration. The law is a wonderful thing, but what a celebration we have that God has given the spirit to us and anyone into the future who puts their faith in Jesus gets filled with that same Holy Spirit so it's just amazing the Holy Spirit is is how the kingdom of God works it's how everything works and in, in, it's it's in, at times it's called God's right hand reaching down intervening it's how God intervenes in the world invisibly like the wind, as powerful as the wind. And it's how we grow. It's, how, it's what changes us. I was talking to my dad, and um, we, I was talking about some... Um, we, we, I got surf camp coming up in about a month with the old fraternity brothers. And, um, and then some other guys show up for the day or so. I'm like, can't stay here. Get out of here. But we, we're full. The inn is full, but people show up, and um, that's great. It's, it's um, fun to see the old friends. But I also realized that, you know, I'm not judging anybody else, but um, they notice that I'm just not the same person anymore. I've changed. And, um, and, so, and you know, you see sometimes people have changed, and sometimes pretty much people are exactly the same, you know, after all these years. And the only reason I'm any different is because of the Holy Spirit. And the only reason anybody else is the same is because they haven't asked the Holy Spirit in. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit's the only thing that changes people. We, we don't really have much of a capacity to change, do we? But the Holy Spirit can. He can transform us and change our hearts. And that's what the kingdom of God is. It's people whose hearts have been changed. And they're, they're under the reign of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's working in them. That is, that's the kingdom of God. And that's how it grows. And so we see this in the Joseph story. Joseph's brothers, Sands, Benjamin, so there's ten of them. Joseph, remember last time he saw them, they were throwing him into a pit pulling him out and then selling him into slavery, last time he saw, saw him. And then they come waltzing into his office in Egypt wanting to buy grain. Well, 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 look who we got here, right? So what happens is, and this is the constant cycle for all of us, is first we have a human reaction. 
first there's a human human reaction. I mean, this is this is the part of us that the Holy Spirit uh, is not <laughs> working in. It's our human side. It's the part that doesn't really change and isn't able to forgive. And so they don't recognize Joseph, and he realizes this. Of course, he recognizes them. They don't recognize him, and he wisely uses an interpreter because otherwise, what would have happened? They would have recognized his voice. Our, uh, is, isn't it amazing our, the capacity our brains have for recognizing someone's voice? I remember being at the other theater, and um, you know, we got Luke here today, and then we had, there was another youth was in the back who had snuck in who I hadn't seen, and, um, and they coughed. <clears throat> and I turned around, and I was like, hey! I recognize that cough. You know, well, how does it, I mean, well, how amazing this capacity um, that we have to recognize. And so Joseph, in, Joseph wisely, shrewdly maybe, d- decides, I don't want them to recognize me. And so he sticks with an interpreter. And, and his message is, is he, it says he spoke harshly to them. Why have you come? And then he accuses them of being spies. You are spies. You've come to to look where our land is unprotected. And then he throws them in prison and says, select one to go back to Egypt and get your brother. Um, The rest of you will stay in prison. And if if you don't, if he doesn't come back with your brother, you're dead. And he had the ability, he had the power to do this. He could have just wiped them right. He, He could have done, he could have killed them all. In fact, he said, otherwise you'll die. And we don't hear that at that moment someone goes, <clears throat> um, sir, that's not allowed here. We're not going to be, you're not going to be able to do that. He could have done it. He, he had the power to kill them right there. He could have he thrown them all in a pit, let them sit there for a while, pull them out, and then sell them into slavery to some Arabians or something. You know, he could have done, he could have exacted revenge. And he had to be thinking about it, right? I mean, speaking harshly, accusing them of being spies. His human, his human reaction was taking over. Throws them in prison. And so that's what happens with us. Initially, that human reaction kicks in, doesn't it? And then what happens is, then the Holy Spirit reminds us. The Holy Spirit taps us on the shoulder and says, God has a plan here. Hey, wait a second. Maybe God has plans for this. Give God a chance to work this through. Remember, we believe that that God's doing things, that God can do anything that's beyond us. And so the Holy Spirit tapped him on the shoulder in the fact that what what the key was was that they bowed to him and he he recognized that, that his dream had been fulfilled. His dream way back when he was a child, that when they were, here's some more grain for you, they were out in the fields collecting grain and making sheaves, and then the brother's sheaves bowed down to him. And then, of course, he blabbed it to the brothers and they didn't like it. But that was coming true. And so what it did was it reminded him that, wait a second, that was a dream from God, and we talked about how important dreams for God, dreams and visions from God were. In fact, they were, they were God's word to the people at that time, the, pe- the people of faith, the family of faith um, from Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, down to Joseph. That's all they had. They didn't have the Bible. They had, they had their great-grandfather saying, and then God spoke to me. And he made me these promises. And then each generation, they had their own dream or their own vision, their own encounter with God where he repeated those same promises. And so this, this dream to Joseph was a promise. I'm going to do something where your older brothers are going to bow down to you. And so he realized this is God, God is at work. And so the Holy Spirit successfully reminded us, this is the key for us too, you know, 
God has a plan here. That's what we need to listen to that Holy Spirit when he reminds us that. God, God is always fulfilling his plan. He is. We're, we're kind of, we're, we're, in, we're in this place like, we're like actors without a script, you know? <laughs> we don't, God hasn't revealed to us the whole, we didn't get to read the script of our life and then decide, yes, this is a movie I'd like to do. That didn't, <laughs> we didn't have that power, did we? We're in it. And we don't have a we don't have a script, and so we're in the movie, we're 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 in the play, and we're actors. Yet we don't have a script. Kierkegaard said, uh, "We live going forwards, but we understand going backwards. You know, life is lived forward, but understood backwards, and that's a lot of the way it is. In the moment, we're not sure what's ahead, but we understand how God has worked when we turn behind." So we don't, we don't have a script, but what we do have is we have an excellent director. We have the Holy Spirit, right? Who's telling us what to say in the moment. Who's telling us what to do. Who's guiding us. You know, if we're just making it up, then we're going we're gonna to mess up this movie pretty bad, aren't we? If we're just, if we don't have a script... And we don't know what we're doing, and we just act, we just have a human reaction to everything. It's gonna be a bad movie. I'm not watching that one. <laughs> you ever had turn down a movie, and after 20 minutes, you're like, I'm out. No, stop. <laughs> this is just not going well. But we have this director who gives us what we need to say, who guides us in the very moment in perfect timing to other people, to connect to other people what to say that draws out what a, what a really good director does, that draws out the gifts that God has given us, that draws them out, that brings them out in that moment, and then they're used. That's what we have. We, we need to remember that. We're, we're in that, in that moment, and the Holy Spirit's our director. And so the... the the dream prompted Joseph to remember that God was, has a plan. And then from that, Joseph completely relented. He, he, after three days, it said, that is always significant in the Bible, and you see it constantly. After three days, he went to the prison and, and spoke to them and said, I fear God. I fear Elohim. That is, that is the name for God in the Joseph story, the name for God Most High. That's the name that they used, that Jacob used, that Joseph used, and the brothers used to refer to the God of Israel, the God that spoke to their grandfather, Abraham. Elohim. He said to them, I mean, they should have known right then, right? This man fears Elohim. Wow. Wow. And then he said, just one of you stay, and the others take grain back to your starving households. See how the Holy Spirit got a hold of him and reminded him during that time? Listen, they have households. These men have families, not to mention your father Jacob, your brother Benjamin, but they have families and they're starving, and you're holding them in prison because of your human reaction for revenge and power over these people who harmed you? The Holy Spirit really got a hold of him. And then he said, one, just one of you go. And then just one of you stay, I'm sorry. And the rest of you are, fr are free to go. I want, you know, he, he, he wants the, it, that connection. But one stay and the rest of you go. The Holy Spirit had softened him. And then the Holy Spirit gets on the brothers, too. The Holy Spirit is the, only, is, is the entity that convicts us of sin. Um, there's, there's lots of ministers and preachers out there who think it's on them to convict everybody of sin, but it's actually the Holy Spirit's job. Now, some people are gifted by the Spirit to do that, and, and they can continue to do that. Uh, please do. Because sometimes we need that. But it's the Holy Spirit that does it. 
that convicts us. And that's exactly what happened to the brothers. They said, um, f- they, they realized, they said, that, you know, we're receiving this punishment because of what we did to Joseph. Why, why would they think that? Why in the world would they, they see a connection there? This has been a long time. They don't recognize that this is Joseph. But the Holy Spirit put it clearly on them. You know, this is punishment. They're convicted of this old sin that they had stuffed away. I mean, it, was, it had been lied about enough times. Think of how many times Jacob brought it up. Well, are you sure? Are you sure you didn't see him? What happened? Tell me everything that happened. My son is gone. Oh, and then they had to tell the lie again. And so they had just, and they had probably just put this to bed. I mean, years and years have gone by. And they're, they're probably thinking, we, we have gotten away with this. But here, the Holy Spirit convicts them and says, this is, this is punishment for this sin. This has to do with this, the Holy Spirit. And we also get an added detail to the Joseph story that we weren't told by the narrator. We could have probably guessed it, but it says that Joseph pleaded with them in great distress. That's what they said. They said, remember how he pleaded with us in great distress? We didn't hear about that before. So think of, you know, this was still the Holy Spirit was bringing them back to that moment of Joseph pleading with them down in the pit. Or when they were selling him to slavery, please don't do this, brothers. So, and, and then, so they're talking about this, and Reuben gives the I told you so. Uh, <laughs> I told you we weren't supposed to do that, which uh, Joseph is overhearing all this and noted, okay, Reuben's off the list. He's okay. <laughs> But he, he, when Joseph overheard this, he, he was moved to tears because he also realized the Holy Spirit is at work here. The Holy Spirit has at work to this. I, the Holy Spirit has it revealed himself to me that this is the fulfillment of a dream. This is God's plan. And then the Holy Spirit has revealed himself to has filled the, my brother's hearts. And now they are feeling remorse for what they, they've done. So Joseph walked away in tears, and he was realizing that the Holy Spirit was at work, and reconciliation was starting to grow and bud. And that's the Holy Spirit's work. Because our human reactions only drive us apart. Don't that? Isn't that true? Our our human knee-jerk reactions, our desire for justice and revenge for those who hurt us, Listen, if we're around each other enough, we're going to end up hurting each other. It's just what we do. We're humans. We step on each other's toes. You know, we, we, take, we, we take out our frustration from some random person or some person we work with and take that frustration and then, bam, hit it right on our closest family members and loved ones. <laughs> you know, we just hurt each other. That's what we do. And, you know, if we're, just, if we're just reacting humanly to one another, there's, that's, that's probably why the, the world is in the shape that it's in. See, we need the Holy Spirit so bad, don't we, for that reconciliation, for that peace, to bring us back together, for forgiveness. And so you can see it's starting to happen in, in Joseph's heart, in his brother's heart. The Holy Spirit's starting to take over and that they're putting the human reaction aside and saying, okay, God's doing something here. The Holy Spirit's at work. The, whole, the, the kingdom of God is, is full of people with changed hearts, and it's the Holy Spirit that changes the hearts. And, and that's what Jesus is saying in Mark. That's what we got in Mark. The kingdom of God is like when a farmer scatters seeds. It grows whether he's asleep or awake. He doesn't even really understand how it works. <laughs> we think we understand now. We have scientific names for things, but we don't know how it works. It's, it's God's magic. I mean, even, okay, in, in, all, in all of our medical science, what we've got here is, is 
put it in position where it can heal itself. You know, that's makes most, most medical work. Put it in position where the, where the, the gift that, of healing that God has given your body can do its work. Because we don't know how to do that. We just want to put it in a position where that can then happen. You know, these are the gifts. We don't really, things grow. God gave us food. We didn't, we didn't get, come here randomly. How, how, how is there so, the perfect amount of food for us in abundance? How does that work? How is there grain that grows that we can store away for those times when, when the fruit is, uh, when there's a famine or there's a, the fruit is bare? I read, um, random side thing, I read recently that part of the reason that Syria is having such problems, um, one theory is that they've had a famine for five years. This is what happens when humans get desperate. You know, there was a, there was a famine for seven years with Joseph. They could be killing each other, but the Holy Spirit steps in. And I'm sure it was scary because the world was coming to Joseph for his grain. So that's what Jesus is saying in Mark is that this, this growth that happens that's so magical, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is how the kingdom grows. The Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and changes our hearts. And that's how it grows and works. And so we see this same thing, this same cycle um, happen in, in Acts in the, at Pentecost. Initially, the disciples were fearful. Jesus told them to stay, and they followed directions, but they weren't out there. They were hiding away. They, were, they had locked each other. They were locked up and, and wondering what's, go, what's going to happen here, and, and v- probably very fearful. And then the Holy Spirit comes upon them and reminds them, God is at work here. God sent Jesus, and he's not done. There is more going on. Just as Jesus said, this isn't over. God is still at work. And so then Peter's emboldened by the Holy, the Holy Spirit comes upon them, and Peter's emboldened by it and goes out and, and then tells everybody this story. And so he goes out and scatters seeds. And, and some... Not all the hearers, but some were cut, cut to the heart. The Holy Spirit, they were, they were that soil where the seed goes in and grows. And they were cut to the heart, and God's kingdom grew that day from 120 to 3,000. And that's, that was the day, Pentecost. It is the, it's the birthday of the church, of the New Testament church. That's when it started was when the Holy Spirit came down. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to abandon you. I will be with you. So how is Jesus with us? Through the Holy Spirit. And so when the Holy Spirit came, then there was a harvest, immediate harvest right at that point. And, you know, we can think today, um, it's very easy to do. It's very easy to do at our church or any other church. I get... Uh, stuff from the seminary and the church overall um, people don't go to church as much as they used to we could look around and say oh you know this little church and we can fret and fear Um, you know I get I I get the stuff from my seminary and, and the Methodist church and and their numbers you know are going way down every year and it's panic mode just about and um and it takes some very faithful people to say, oh, time out, guys, time out. Because, and, and the church, of course, is trying everything. <laughs> you know, the, the church is trying all these ideas. How are we going to get people into this church? You know, um, and the churches are competing against each other. Well, we'll, 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 we're Walmart, you're Target, and we're, you know, it's, they're just trying to get people in and trying every human idea under the sun. That's not the way it works. There has been a church since Pentecost for 2,000 years. 
none of that had anything to do with human ideas. It is simply the work of the Holy Spirit. This church, OCC, has always been all about being a body life church. It's all about the work of the Holy Spirit. If God wants to bring people in, God will bring people in. If God wants us to stay small, God will, then we'll stay small. It's, it's just up to God. We don't, I don't want to do any marketing. I want every person that comes in here to have some story of how God brought them in. It's the Holy Spirit's job. It's not our job. Our job is to listen to the director, to go out every morning, every day. We're in the play. We don't have a script, <laughs> but we have a wonderful director. If we let him guide us and give us the words, that's all we have to do. Then we'll see, because we can't make things grow. You know, we can scatter seed, we can water it. Here's, this is 1 Corinthians 3, 6 and 7 from Paul. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. You know, Paul's making it clear to us, isn't he? Every one of us have, every one of us that puts our faith in Jesus has the Holy Spirit. And if we listen to that, if we follow that director, then the kingdom of God grows through us somehow. What does that look like? I have no idea. You know, I don't, I'm, I, I don't have the script either. But he, God, it's not going to look, and it's also, it's not going to look like it used to. God doesn't repeat himself. God is not boring. God doesn't play the same old movie over and over. <laughs> you know, golly, we always need, there are some good movies that are worth repeating, but we always need something new, don't we? We, we need new ideas. When, you know, Hollywood repeats the same rerun, you're like, come on. Come up with some new ideas, guys. And, and, and the best ones are always life stories because it's God's story. It's new. It's fresh. God's always, OCC's not going to look like it used to or this or that. It's, it, it, that's fine. And the church isn't going to, we think church is one thing. Well, God might think it's another. So we need to just be open to whatever that is, whatever, whatever the director has in mind. Um, that's, that's what we need to be about. So it's, it's fun. The Holy Spirit is a lot of fun. It's surfing. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Lord, we, we thank you so much. We're just so grateful for um, this power that is from on high, that is beyond us, that we don't even really fully understand or grasp. And we just ask that we would be open to it, to listening to it, to walking by it, and, and surrendering to it. Um, you're the director. We're the actors. And just direct us, guide us. And, um, and that's what we need. That's all we need uh, for the kingdom to grow through us, around us, and in our own hearts. So thank you for the Holy Spirit this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So take a couple minutes um, to let the seed into your heart. And um, our, our altar piece is starting to look quite nice, isn't it? Some holy graffiti going on up here. I like the pictures and, and uh, the words. So take a couple minutes and then... That will be in the lobby to share.